We're now joined by our second place finisher, Martin Truex Jr., driver of the Five Hour Energy Bass Pro Shops Toyota for Furniture Row Racing. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, Chris Gill from the Leader in Corning. Uh, just even if he hadn't run out of fuel, like how much of that car was left? Brakes, tires, that sort of thing. Um, you know, enough to be faster than the nine, just not enough to pass him, you know. Um, I could get right to him. You know, I chased him down from a ways back after that restart. I took, uh, I took a little too long to get around 41. He checked out, got a lead on us. And, you know, I just, um, just tried all I could to chase him down. And, and I got there, you know, with plenty of time. I just, uh, every time I'd get, start putting together some good corners and get close enough to him to think, even think about making a move, I'd get sideways behind him. Just, he did a good job of putting his car where, exactly where it needed to be and not making a mistake. And, um, you know, I just, I was too loose all day on exit on all the corners. I couldn't get the power down good enough and uh, running behind him there, just burn my rear tires off trying to, trying to make something happen. So, you know, he, uh, he missed turn one on the final lap, but I missed the, the inner loop on the final lap and lost five car lengths to him. And, you know, but so when he made that mistake in one, I was too far back to capitalize. And, um, you know, like I said on TV, we ran out of gas anyway. So, um, you know, coming off a of turn five that last lap. So it, it was really all moot point. I mean, we, you know, he was going to win regardless. So, you know, congrats to him on his first win. It's a, it's a big deal for, uh, for those guys. And, you know, they've been, uh, they've been so close. So Chase did a great job and, uh, you know, they earned it. So congrats to him. Right here in the middle to read. <clears throat> Reed Spencer, NASCAR Wire Service. With all the pressure you were putting on him for basically those last 20 laps, were you surprised that he was able to to drive that last without without a mistake the way he did? Not really. I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, he's an experienced driver now and he's been here enough and, you know, he had a really fast race car this weekend. So, um, you know, really his car was faster than mine everywhere but the braking zones at the end. And, um you know, if you can't get runs off the corner, it's really hard to pass guys. So, you know, like I said, I could get to him. I just couldn't do anything with him once I got there. I was just way too loose on exit. So we tried and uh, we come up short, but, you know, it was a good day and a uh, solid effort by everybody on the team. And, uh, you know, we did good. We got a bonus point, so that was good. Uh, you know, we obviously would have liked to get another win, but uh, we weren't the best car today. And, and was uh, turn? It was my turn and I didn't capitalize. So that's a, a missed opportunity. And we're now, we're now joined by our third place finisher, Kyle Bush, driver of the M&M's Crunchy Mint Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Go ahead, Lee. Martin, Martin, were, Martin, were you aware of what the fuel situation was on that final run? Cole said we were real close, but he thought we were better than, in better shape than the nine for whatever reason. Obviously, I had to run my you-know-what off to, uh, to try to do something with him, so I, I burned up more gas that last run. Um, clearly burned up my tires as well, so um, it was all for naught. And is there any update on your contract situation? No. Kyle, um, as far as what was going through your head when Adam Stevens said he only got eight gallons of fuel in the number 18 Toyota? Sounds familiar. Every year we come here, we have a fast car and fail to execute. So uh, whether that's just called bad luck or whatever, just uh, last year we had a lug nut get stuck in the caliper. This year we had a fueling problem, so... It ceases to amaze me. Nothing surprises me anymore. Does it surprise the kind of effort you put in to come from 26 to third? Does it surprise you? No, not in the okay. least. But I, right. I'm saying it surprises I mean, me. What, what did it? Right. I mean, if you had heard, Hell, yeah. if you had heard the crew chiefs, you know, warning their drivers, he's coming, he's on a mission. I mean, we heard this, uh, and you know, I, I can't explain what you do behind the wheel. I mean, yeah, it's it's hard work. You know, it was a heck of a lot harder than it should have been, but. Um, you know, that was the predicament we were put in, and we had to uh, go go work. Um, you know, I certainly gave Joe his money's worth today, maybe even a couple more races. So, um, you know, overall, just um, we had a fast race car. I can't say enough about our guys, our shop, um, everybody, TRD engine, everything that, uh, that gave us that opportunity. We just failed to capitalize. So it's a disappointing day, no question. Are there any other questions? Turn it back back. Pat Decola, NASCAR.com, for, for both of you guys. It seemed like the intensity in this race was just ramped up from lap one. Was that 
unexpected, or were you expecting that, or in, will we see that at the Roval too? I think it's just Watkins Glen. You know, this place is uh, really fast. You got to attack, and it's um, you know you're on a on a razor's edge here. So I guess it just it always looks like we're all out of control because we kind of are, I guess. And uh, I think because of that, that's why a lot of people like this track. It's a lot of fun, but you got to you got to drive the crap out of it to be good. And uh, you know, so it's pretty neat. All right. Any final questions? All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys.